How's it going? My name is Gavin Strange. Welcome to the stream. It is lovely to have you all here. Damn, lots of stuff happening already in the chat. Hello to everyone who's here in the chat. Hello to everyone watching. First of all, got to shout out some lovely people. Bell13, Aaron RP, A A A S, Andy, you've all just subscribed. Thank you so much. That is super, super, super kind of you to do that. I appreciate it. Um, I've not been streaming for for maybe a couple of months or, or so. So so hello to the new people who have never caught uh, one of these streams before. Thank you very much for Keep stopping by. Um, oh, we've got a, a LaFennel Work has just started following us. Hello, thank you very much for the follow. Man, it's all kicking off. I genuinely thought I would just be talking to myself on a Saturday night, but it's flipping lovely to see you all here. So thank you very much for spending your evening. Chloe is here, Podgy Panda is here, Red Panda Redux is here, Laura, Defining Beauty Design is here, Hobu is here, Matt Booth is here. Matt Booth, Matt, what are your lovely kids' names? Hello. Hello, we've got, we've got, this is a family show tonight, a family show. We've got some young members in the audience, which I'm psyched about. So thank you very much, everyone. Right. Oh, I'm all excitable. I'm all excitable. So yes, yeah, so I haven't streamed for a couple of months. That was because um, we were getting ready to have our second baby and our second baby is here and she's happy and she's healthy and she was two months old yesterday. She came 10 days early. Um, so we had a lovely Christmas, a pater lovely paternity and Christmas together so I had five weeks off work Oscar and Noah shout out Oscar and Noah for watching hello boys I hope you're well hope you're down to letting you stay up late we're gonna be waffling on for some nonsense tonight but thank you very much for for tuning in um so yeah so yeah we had little baby Sylvie Blue strange she's a little cutie she's a right little podge she's amazing um and and yeah everything was fantastic so we've had a lovely lovely time as a together as a family now I'm back at um back at work from here from in the den working uh, remotely and stuff and and yeah it's going it's going really good my wife jane is an absolute hero she's looking after both uh, sully who is now four and uh, a newborn in lockdown without being able to go anywhere and she's incredible she's incredible oh pegasus blur says can we have a shout out to my boy tobias who's watching whilst also playing nba 2k what up tobias that is some impressive multitasking playing NBA 2K and watching this as well. Oh, it's nice, nice. Thanks so much for everyone tuning in. This is this is ace. So the whole point of today's stream is um is is I want to look back. So today, 20 years ago today, I um registered the domain name jam-factory.com and I can't believe that 20 years later it is still um I'm still doing it. I'm I'm still, you know, Jam Factory is as much part of me as anything else. And it's just been this sort of, uh, I guess, alter ego, this sort of alias that I that I um, make work and, and put work out under. But it's always been a bit of a playground, a chance to experiment and to, a, a, a place to, you know, just basically make the work that, that you want to be hired for. You know, it, it's always been guy. that. And I've been very, very fortunate that, it has grown into that, you know, I developed my filmmaking work under the name of Jam Factory and, and God bless, I'm now a director at Oddman, you know, 20 years later, you know, it, it just goes to show that you've just kind of got to make and do the work. And for me, Jam Factory was a place that allowed me to do that because I would just show and share everything I was up to. So I'm really, really just excited today to celebrate that. I'm a right soppy old sentimental person. So it's really nice to be able to share that with you. And I've sort of compiled a bunch of, of selection of work from the last two decades to to just rip apart and have a look and and just you know tell you the stories behind it so shout out to everyone in the chat bell 13 says can you shout out to my son rufus who is obsessed with art ninja rufus you're amazing thank you so much i'm glad you like the old art ninja um since we've been in lockdown cbbc um decided to start showing more reruns of art ninja as part of their lockdown learning series and it's really awesome that uh that lots of people are getting to experience it again so uh, if you don't know ricky martin a good friend of mine is the art ninja it's his tv show and me and rich and sarah and and, and a bunch more of ricky's friends are all part part of it with him um playing ourselves pretty much uh, and just mucking around and making art so it's really cool that that hopefully can be a bit of a useful thing in lockdown as well um pen is here penelope helen is here congrats gav you've come so far and i'm hella proud of you oh sausage you're too kind you're too kind thank you very much green to the bone says happy jam factory anniversary oh thank you green to the bone and 
Red Panda Redux, you're also th- you're 36 today. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations. Well done on surviving 36 trips around the sun. That's very good. Happy birthday to you. I hope you've had a wonderful day. Um, yeah. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? It's nice to be streaming again. It's nice just to be... <gasps> Andy Rudkin is here. Oh, my days. Andy's here. So... So the whole thing with, with, with Jam Factory is I worked at a place, I was uh, a young designer, I didn't go to university, I got a job um, when I was 18 years old, I think I was just 17 Keep actually, at a place called um, Kristen Davis a Design Agency in Leicester and I was the youngest of the young and Andy Rookin, the lovely Andy is here in the chat, he was one of the designers there at Kristen Davis who took me under his wing. Um, Andy, you must have just been like, who is this kid? Who is this kid? I had lots of hair and lots of hair gel. If you can imagine that. If you can even imagine that's what I look like. Um, yeah, and I've just got such fond memories of that that time. And it was being there at Kristen Davis. I had a boss called Nathan who um, sort of uh, was teaching me the ways of, of digital design, of, of interactive like website design. And it was him that says, look, you basically need to get better. And the only way to get better is to do... Um, and so he's like, I'll show you how to, you know, build your own website and get your own domain name. I was like, oh, okay. Again, I was 20 years old. Um, I was like, oh, at 20 years, 18 years old. It's like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. You know, I knew of the internet a bit, um, but I, I was just, I was just so excited by everything. And it was him that says, look, go here and think of a cool name, and that will be your website. And so it's all thanks to Nathan. So seeing Andy here in the chat is so special because I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be you know I wouldn't have a dream job if it wasn't for for Andy and for Rich and for Nathan and for Nib and for Carl and for Lisa all these people that basically let me work with them when I was just a kid it was just it was just yeah it was just something something else um so oh Andy I'm touched that you're in the chat man thank you you're a special boy love you man I love you too dude thank you so much for all of this who would have thought it eh eh sitting in that in that design studio in Leicester being stupid singing filthy songs amazing Red Panda Redux says Gav donations don't work what doesn't work where 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 what doesn't work I, to be honest I because I haven't streamed in two months it took me a while to get all this plugged in and to see if it was all it was all working so I'm, I'm it's a miracle to be honest any of this is is working so yes if anything is a bit shonky i i apologize oh i feel all ex- i feel all excited i feel all excited right let's go because we've got we've got a lot we've got a lot to we've got to let a lot to get through and um, but please do ask and shout any old questions as we're going through and stuff this is this is my favorite thing about streaming it's the interactivity um oh the donation link getting a 401 error oh Oh, I'll look into that. Thank you for trying, though. Thank you for trying. That's really, really kind of you. That was that. I think that's just built into Streamlabs. I think so. I'll, I'll check that. But thank you for even trying. That's very, very kind of you. I don't expect any of that. And thank you to the recent follows as well. Lafena work. Egon was here. Green to the bone. Red Panda Redux. <gasps> You're all diamonds. So, so yeah. So twenty years. So before Jam Factory, before that even uh, happened, I had actually built my own website in the year 2000. And I don't know if you know, but it is possible to build and design a website completely in Microsoft Word. I had no other clue about how to, I didn't really know what HTML was. I just wanted to have a go at a website and you can build an absolutely hack together thing in um in word so that's that's what i use and it is super 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 cringy this is what it looked like hello design bit of a bevel and emboss there look at that script text hello and welcome to my web page i'm constantly adding i'm con- constantly constantly am i i'm constantly adding new pages pics information etc etc so check again at a later date for added features so click those mouses and enjoy the site if you want to say anything about the site then click the email link thanks for visiting and remember here we go a bad photoshop graphic it's not until you've lost everything that you're free to do anything can you tell i was absolutely obsessed by fight club and the and the like so so cringy aaron says did you have a guest book i don't know if i was on the guest book actually was I? Did I have a guest book? I can't remember. I can't remember. And Andy here says, oh, geez, that's how I got into it as well. Yes, 
yes, yes, yes. Amazing. Oh, mate. Oh, this. So this this website is so cringe. This is the kind of pictures that was on it. I took myself very seriously, took him, taking moody black and white pictures on my super terrible. <laughs> super. Ter and this I've picked. That's the sort of one of the least cringiest. I honestly, I honestly could not bring myself to show you some of the other pictures. I turned inside out with cringe. <laughs> it's so bad, man. <laughs> And so there was a section. There was a there was a section on my site called portfolio because that's how you get the job right. This was some of my college work, and this it's a running. It's a, Andy Andy Rudkin will tell you this. It's a running joke that I have got this absolute dream job, and I was so so terrible at college. Such bad design in every single way. And I just was maybe this is what you're like when you're seventeen, eighteen. I mean, sixteen, seventeen. It was like, yeah, I think I'm edgy. And again, I was obsessed with like the grunge uh, and the grunge aesthetic of Fight Club um, and sort of like David Carson and sort of all of this like grungy, grungy graphics. And I'm sure the brief here was like something, something about the future and just like, maybe a baby has a cyborg eye. <laughs> this, welcome to the digital revolution. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it with your eyes. Put that in your eyes right now. Oh boy. What's that? Plastic wrap, glow, red glow. Oh, oh. <laughs> and Andy says, I'll never forgive you for that bloody map. Was the map, was that the same map? So I, I made quite a few spectacular errors when I was at Kristen Davis. And one of them, I'm sure Andy was really busy. And, and I don't know if it's this example, or maybe I've forgotten what I did wrong with Venice. But didn't you give me a map of a hotel, like a, a, a drawing plan? And I just didn't pay too much attention and I didn't do a good job. And I ended up missing out a quite an important supporting wall and it went to print or something. I remember making quite a spectacular error there. So, yeah, I mean... I'm still flabbergasted by this design. Just, but at the time, I remember, you know, playing in Photoshop, man. It was like, oh, look at this. I can have glows and I can have blurs and just, I mean, there's blood splats in the background. Also, I was sort of like, I, I can't do any horror films, anything graphic, but like, do you remember Stigmata and um, End of Days? And like in the in the Fight Club 2000s era, there was this sort of slew of sort of edgy, sort of action horror films and so that text at the top that welcome text with, with the faded stuff behind it is like super stigmata-esque and the matrix of course everyone was influenced by the matrix man it's so funny looking back at this look at this this was a business card this was a business card how pretentious is that powerful image gavin strange graphic designer that's me everyone that's me. <laughs> oh my God, man. It was amazing. I found all of this stuff last night. It's just incredible. <laughs> and again, this is not the way I couldn't, I just couldn't, I couldn't bring, I couldn't bring myself to, to share anymore. I really couldn't. It's, oh man. And, and there's, there's some content, there's some content on this, on this page as well that I had to share. So under the profile section, this was, I, I wrote this, obviously copied and pasted it, at the top of my, pro about me. I'm a riddle wrapped around a paradox inside an enigma of a metaphor. Take that, multiply it by X, and take it to the ends of infinity, and you still only have a glimpse of who I am. What? I was just a stupid 17-year-old. <laughs> like, I just felt like, I'm super deep, I'm super complex, and you don't really understand me. <laughs> oh my God. And this is the thing, because I still think of me back then, I'm like the way I am now, like I love pink, I hopefully try and be happy, I'm very silly, but for some reason I felt like I had this inner turmoil when I was, I was, Aaron says, God, if I met you when we were 17, I'd have slapped you. <laughs> Mate, you totally should have. Oh, and there's some gold on this thing. Here we go. So this, this gives you a sense of what 17 year old me was like under the under the about section under cool people cool people robert rodriguez okay legit i was obsessed with him because he's an amazing director kevin smith james arnett bob El elmo ali g <laughs> Gwyneth tarantino bam margera cartman charmander wait for it cisco yep i fully loved cisco 
even at my wedding, Johnny and my brother, who are my best men, didn't let it let, let me live it down and brought me uh, Cisco Stong Song on CD. Oh my God. I don't even know why I'm showing or sharing this with you, but it made me sort of laugh and cry seeing it all again. So that's a, that's the kind of people that I like idolise. <laughs> the thongs. What in? Why did I think the guy who wrote thong song was <laughs> deserved to be in that they that that? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Fave magazine, Max Power, Empire, FHM, Heat, all the good stuff. All the good stuff, yeah. Just, yeah. I'm not even going to talk about that. <laughs> Max Power. I love... Oh, yes, Pegasus says, I had a Jodeci phase, so I can't get it. See? Also, I think I was into Drew Hill. I like one, one, uh, 112 and Drew Hill. And so, yeah, that's my excuse. Max Power. I loved cars. This is thing. For about the last fifteen years, I didn't drive. I was scared to drive, but for some reason, when I was a teenager, I loved cars, even though I didn't have one. Just shows. Aaron, Aaron, you're throwing shade here, boss. I'd love to see what you were like at seventeen. If you are, if you are not as, I'm sure you're going to be as equally as cringy as me at this. I hope, or maybe I'm just awful. I don't know. Ambition to make it in Hollywood, writing, directing my own movies. <laughs> it's seventeen. Yeah, I mean, you got a dream, haven't you? It's an ambition. And, you know, I'm a director now, so in some form, God bless, I managed to get there. Uh, maybe not to Hollywood, but <laughs> on my days. Loves, loves. Modified cars, loud music, movies, summer party rings. <laughs> oh, my days. Why am I showing this? I don't know. Why, why all the kids who are watching it as well god bless you because you're all thinking who are all these people and what what oh my days hates this is totally irrational jerry halliwell i don't know why what's jerry done traffic wardens i didn't drive why do i do they buy folk music nah. star trek i like star trek i don't know 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 any of this so that was a that that gives you a snapshot of who I was. <laughs> Reviver Knight says none of the red text lines up and it's hurting my brain. Pegasus says my daughter Holly is watching and she's thinking what? Hello Holly, just ignore all of this. This is I'm just talking about how silly I was when I was a young person. That's all you need to know. I was very silly. Anyway, so yeah, so that that was pre pre Jam Factory, but basically when I did have. I'd registered jam-factory.com. I did. I used it as a um, as a proving ground for for everything and anything. And I would redesign it every single time. I just loved. I loved it. I love learning stuff, and I love Nathan. My boss would teach me. You can clearly see that the the main body there and the menu are made with um, HTML tables as well. Of course, that's how you built stuff. Um, yeah, so I just tried to dig and find as many of these as I as I could. I looked, took myself very seriously. Look at that. That's pre. That's before I even had a logo. I took those moody photos of myself. Here we go. Visual imagery of things I think are goddamn cool. British bulldogs. What? My mates. My terrible tattoo on my back. <laughs> what? What? I don't know. But I guess I guess the point is I really liked it. I really liked having a space I could call my own. I think, and I enjoyed learning sort of you know web technology and and HTML and CSS and all of that all of that stuff and just kind of building it and yeah just just trying different different stuff and redesigning it all the time even though it is super super cringe reviver says is akira in there no i, I hadn't no i had i saw a kid i watched akira when i was a teenager at school but i don't know why i hadn't decided that was a you know a tentpole moment for me to to always come back to it i know i don't know aaron says needs more java applets i'm pretty sure there was some java applets on this i really do um yeah, I managed to find the very, very first logo uh, pre-drawing the actual little factory itself. Um, and I, I remember doing it, uh, I think I sort of printed out and used it as a stencil and then uh, photographed it and used it as this textured thing. I'm not quite sure why. I think I just didn't know what I wanted it to be. And so for a while, I had... I had I had this sort of on a website. I, had, I made some T-shirts as well. I basically just... Um, 
yeah, just would would I just love branding. And so again, sort of having this space was so exciting. <laughs> Bell thirteen in the chat says it's officially a Jam Factory stream. I have said Akira. Yes. If you've not seen a stream before, Akira is my most favourite uh, film ever made, ever, and I pretty much make it uh, an unofficial thing that I have to mention it at least once every stream. So there we go, Akira. And if you've not seen Akira, go and watch Akira. It's the greatest thing that's ever been created. So yeah, I just try doing more and more, really. This is another, I would redesign it all the time. I realised there was this thing um, that we did. So th that's Andy. So Andy Rudkin in the chat, who I told you about, who was the designer who took me under his wing. We, and this is what I loved about it. We just decided to do stuff. So we had this Uncle Andy's advice corner and we'd get people to write in and Andy would give them uh, like agony aunt advice. <laughs> And I can't remember sort of why or when we decided to do it. We just did. We just had this section. And, you know, if you had someone visiting your website back then, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It was super fun. So it just it, it kind of this is what I love, love about Twitch streaming is it kind of feels like that. It kind of feels like that era of like a connection with people and you, you develop a relationship. And, and then it was a, a sort of a way to exchange stuff. Um, sort so of having your own website was that so yeah I just would would redesign it all the time and I'd learn about new techniques or more than more than not I'd have you know I'd see another website that I absolutely loved and then just want to dissect it and figure out how how to remake it and do it and yeah I didn't really have a designable uh, style really it was just sort of picking apart and copying everything that I loved and but that's how you learn right that's absolutely how you learn Egon was here, says, did you have the little counter to see how many people came to your page? Do you know what? I don't know if I did, only because I think I was like, no, I, I want to design this without all of that stuff. I think I tried to make it a point. It was probably hidden. It's probably embedded somewhere, but I didn't I didn't have it at the bottom. I think that very first terrible looking website, the black the black with red text one prob most probably did. That looks like a, a counter thing, doesn't it? And Andy here in the chat says, I'm so sorry for any of the advice I ever gave out. Totally unqualified. I mean, Andy, what's the age difference between us? Because I just remember thinking, Andy's so grown up and mature. He knows everything. Um, but I'm, there's not got to be that many years between us, is there? Now I'm thinking about it. But it's just the way it works, isn't it? I was just so new to all of it. And it was like, look at these people. It's a job. Oh, it's, it's amazing. I've got such fond memories of this time. And yeah, here, I, you know, I just wanted to do everything and just sort of take photos and do the design and do the type. And yeah, I've just always loved having it as this as this space. Um, and, you know, when you just get obsessed over styles and you get obsessed over specific things, that's that's kind of what I what I would, what I would do. So you're 42 now. Yeah, so there's only there's only three four years between us Andy isn't it funny isn't it funny so when I was 18 you would have you would have been 22 so I I was looking at you oh my god he's got it all sorted he knows exactly what he's doing you were a 22 year old so oh man such good times um like things like this so this was again pre-logo but sort of I used to really like trying to like figure out all of this um <laughs> Sorry, I've got to pause. There's an amazing comment in the chat. Pegasus Blair. Hey, Gav, this is Pegasus Blair's daughter. Wow, he's away from the computer. Just saying that I have absolutely no idea what you are talking about. I know I'm nine, but I still have a small brain. Oh, well, thank you for being in the chat. And thank you for sticking with us whilst we're uh, watching and, and doing this silly stuff. I know this makes no sense at all, but... The point of the story is, it's very fun to be very silly. So please don't ever grow up. Stay and have fun. Because life is, you know, you got to do it. you got to do it. Um, yeah, there was, oh, look at this. Look at this one. This was, I fully leaned into um, the, the sort of web 2.0 gradients, drop shadows, uh, reflections. Oh, all of that stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I miss it. I miss it. I miss that. I really do. So if you can have, um, I was about to say you can have personality, but it all ended up looking the same, didn't it? Because everyone's website was the same. But making repeating patterns with the diagonal lines. I'm treating myself, by the way. Cheers, everyone. That is, um, it's like knockoff San Pellegrino lemonade from Audi. It's the best. Super cheap. It's lovely. Mm-mm. Lovely. This was a later one. I've, I sort of ended up skipping a bunch as well because um, 
because loads of them are built in PHP and I can't I don't have a PHP server running anymore so I couldn't I couldn't see what it looked like so I kind of maybe five or six websites I had no idea uh, they were saved on my computer but I can't run PHP so these are I've sort of just tried to dig in and find what I can I remember this one I think this was built on Tumblr of all things actually uh, which was quite really quite useful I quite like that but yeah I love it I absolutely love just sort of just digging in and trying to trying to make trying to make new stuff um and yeah so you know the site that i've got now i'm really excited about and then funny enough i'm so i'm working with editor x which is like a, a creative subdivision of wix and they reached out to me just before christmas about sort of working together as like as a paid partnership like a like a paid sort of thing together but i was looking at uh, editor x to I was like, I want to rebuild my site from scratch, and so it's actually worked out perfect. So we're working on it right now, sort of based on this new, uh, this new style of like my hot pink and, and neon green and stuff. And yeah, it's wicked. So I'm really excited to have a new, new jam factory for 20 years. Um, An American typo says, I really hope there's a cool people list on the new site. David, yes. Oh my god, I've got to. Shall I just bring back some of that super tacky stuff just in my brand new website? Oh, and Red Panda Redux says, show us your MySpace page. What song did you have automatically playing? Well, this is the thing. So I style all my MySpace to look like a website. And I had all of my sort of graphics on there. And I had all of my like, photography and characters and stuff. And I ended up being able to make a vinyl toy by having all of my work on MySpace because I kind of used it as a platform. So, yeah, I love using MySpace. I can't think what songs I would have had embedded back then. I was into a lot of screamo stuff back then, so I don't know what, I don't know what. It was either sort of hip-hop or screamo stuff, but yeah, I miss Tom. I miss Tom as well, Red Panda Redux. Gloom909, am I late? Did I miss the tripod or Geocities pages? Yes, you missed an absolute shocker of a web page, my very first website. We are not going back to that. I mean, you could replay the video, but still, I'm never going back to it. Um, and so I kind of wanted to have a look at the, my spaces as well, because I really pride myself in my den. I love this den. I love being in my my space, but um, it's been it's been it's not always been sort of like this. Uh, I found this from when I used to. I still lived at home. Look at the square monitor, it's like a postage stamp. Square monitor. Do you remember those Microsoft laser mice as well? And uh, look at that, a HP Compact iPad. Oh yeah, Revival Nights is where are the toys? I know. I don't think I was into. I don't think I was into um, toys. I I I got into vinyl toys when I went to London and stumbled across oh, Play Beast. No, oh, I said it was a tiny little vinyl toy store in London in Covent Garden. Play Bag can't remember anyway that was when i discovered that vinyl toys were a thing so yeah so i just had this super clean thing I had look look at that micro pc that i that another thing nathan who was my boss who encouraged me to build jam factory he was the one that um encouraged well, told me and showed me how to build my own pc as well so before mac i used to build my own pcs and properly nerded out on it and i really liked it yeah ipod classic hb compact ipad you know for all that busy stuff i was doing <laughs> And a and a, a tiny chrome, uh, chrome monitor and a little wavy desk that my dad built. And that chair, I had that chair. Actually, has Jane got that chair? That chair, my mum nicked from work, and I still, I've ha I I had it up until recently. It was super comfy. Um, hello, flames on the wall. Yep, yeah, someone was an artist. I mean, there's lots to be upset about in this image. The cables, for starters. Who was I? What's going on there? Awful. Absolutely awful. Borrowed for life, not nicked. That's it, Red Panda. Borrowed for life. That's the one. There you go. Look at that. No Wi-Fi. Modem, router next to it. Low. Oh, horrendous amount of cables on the bottom. <laughs> Pegasus blesses. Gavin, this is all brilliant. <laughs> I feel like I'm burying my soul to you all. Those... Flames, those flames. <laughs> oh, who says, why is one mouse on the ground? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. There's two mice, mice, mice mats, mouse mats on the bottom there. I don't know what was going on. That, that, does, did anyone else remember those silver shonky desks from Ikea as well? These things, that's peak 2000s, isn't it? 
chrome. Look, I've got silver, silver, uh, silver radiator, silver outline on those blue flames. Absolutely dreadful. That was what we did before we had Wi-Fi. I remember just used to having, if I wanted to just work work outside and have a bit of a um, have a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of me time. I would just plug in the Ethernet cable and just trail it out the window. I used to just just and we had a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a pond there, so I just have to sort of like cable this red LAN cable and just lob it out the window, and then just go downstairs, go out the kitchen, and then sit there in my little my little chair. <laughs> oh, bless you, bless the kids, bless the kids who are watching in the chat. Who this is totally alien. We used to have to plug a computer in to get the internet. And even then, you, it might not work. So imagine that. Grunge Gav. Oh, Greg, Phoenix Studios, mate. There's, I, I should have, I, I'm not, there's not really many personal pictures in here, but yeah. Long, grungy hair. That was me before I, before I lobbed it all off. Aaron says the students at my uni used to throw the cables out the windows in the summer. Yeah, it's the best way to do it best way look at that i remember i had one of these things again i only have this technology because nathan my boss as well as him teaching me how to build a website and how to build a pc he would always buy the latest gadgets get bored and then sell them to me super cheap and this was this hp like that's essentially an ipad pro with a case isn't it um yeah i love that thing it was i'm sure it was touch screen as well i think that's running windows xp that's running my website as well i remember that oh god that's internet explorer Oh, good times. Good times. <laughs> Were you listening to Pearl Jam at the time? I think I was really into... I don't know what I was into at the time. I'd love to try and remember. And, and sort of fast forward, I'd moved to Bristol and I moved to the way of the Mac. And, oh, man, I used to love my iMac. I used to... I think everything was Ikea. Everything was Ikea. And then I just moved to... Basically, everything was Ikea and Apple. That's what I, that's what I moved to. Look at my little, my little iChat windows there. Look, do you remember iChat? Banging. Oh, that that MacBook Pro. Do you remember the um eyesight the eyesight cameras? They weren't obviously the cameras weren't built into the laptops. I used to um it used to sort of come as a separate thing and it had a really powerful magnet so you could stick it on the top of your iMac. And uh, once me and my friends were trying to record a podcast and on the laptop, and so I really wanted to get the speaker closer to us. So I just put the magnetic uh, uh webcam next to the trackpad on the laptop and i wondered why the laptop just started going really really weird and then started flickering black and then it just sort of displayed that weird school face and it turns out the magnet is super strong on the bottom of an eyesight magnet and i had literally placed it directly over the spinning hard drive so i totally killed that with a uh um with a with a webcam what a nana didn't you sell that camera to a bloke off a telly did i i can't remember andy Nice keyboard. Were you a Netscape guy, says Bell? Do you know what? I think I was. Yeah, Netscape before Internet Explorer. Because I did a lot of digital website design, designing for IE was awful. So, yeah, I think Net, Net, Netflix, Netscape was my, my weapon of choice. There you go. That's another one in Bristol. See, so you just progressively get bigger, get a bit, bit bigger. Oh, Steffi Fung is here. Hey, Steffi, how you good? Are you good? How are you doing? Are you good? Just truncated it. We're just going back through the archives of just nonsense. You, thankfully, you've missed a lot of embarrassing stuff. So it only gets better from here. Are you getting enough sleep? No. <laughs> no, I am not getting enough sleep. Well, that's all right. I think that's just being called a parent, isn't it? Just, that's all right. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah, there you go. Started to collect some toys. Started to get a bit more space. Started to have some bits. This is when I lived with my friend Rich. Uh, Rich Dawn, Rich T, who was a guest on the stream uh, quite a few months ago. Me and him used to live together. This was a little working office. I only got one screen on a MacBook Pro. Whoa. Couldn't even survive. Couldn't even survive with that now. But yeah, it's nice looking. It's nice looking at these things uh, grow and change. Actually, it's ace. There we go. So that's a little bit. That's a little bit of a snapshot of of, of look at all this nonsense. All these terrible websites and terrible things. Let's have a look at some projects. So I, I basically I was just went through um, my archive as far back as I could go, and I just started sort of um, assembling stuff in a bit of a rough theme as I sort of saw it emerging. 
And I never really realised how much sort of stuff I did with skateboarding. I love skateboarding, um, but I didn't. I started it too late. I started skating when I was nineteen, which is the worst time to skate because you're at that point. I had a job, and so I was just scared I would hurt myself or break my wrist and and you know do myself out of a job. Um, but I absolutely love it. And I still love skateboarding culture. I love sort of the the whole ethos behind skateboarding. I love the sort of like individualism of it, but also sort of the tribalism of it with the people that you connect with. Um, and you know, the graphics, sort of the graphic aesthetic culture of skateboarding is so freeing, it can kind of be whatever it wants to be. And so, yeah, being a young designer, I, I wanted to do things myself and I wanted my own skate company. And, and so me and my friend Martin started this thing called Synthetic, where I would basically um, design uh, graphics on, a, on Illustrator, print them out on paper, and then hand spray them in his dad's garage in Leicester and that's kind of what we did we just just made these 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 things <sighs> Bell says Rodney Mullen or day one song well Rodney's obviously the OG because he invented like everything but to watch day one day one style because day one is gnarly so gnarly so fast and so tech but Mullen is just he's the grandfather of it isn't he really that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Go for a go for a cup of tea with Mullin and just go and watch Day One Song Shred, I reckon. So yeah, so I I just would sort of there's the only way that I could know to do graphics was to sort of design stuff and make um, make templates and make make stencils and I was sort of really learning Illustrator. Um, along the way and just 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 sort of make stuff i mean look how sort of neat and vector the graphic is there on the right and then then look at all the overspray lines and all the sort of imperfections on the board on the left but i loved it i absolutely loved it i really really did and after doing and this is the thing i was always using jam factory i was always using my website to sort of put all of this stuff on and show and share um and and just over time, I sometimes I think maybe this even came through MySpace because I was using MySpace as a place to put um, work out. I got this um, California uh, skate shop sent me an email called Forever Summer saying, "Hey, would you like to do a board graphic for us?" I'm just like, "Oh my god!" I think that was one of the earliest commissions, and especially one of the earliest commissions from something that um, you know i didn't do as a job you know i did graphics and characters and and all of this stuff just for fun because i really loved wanting to do it and that was the first time someone reached out and said would you like to do it for us that man that still makes me really excited i'm still stoked that that that, that happened so, so yeah i don't i don't i think johnny my good friend johnny has got one of these i don't know if i've got one if i have i don't know where it is but yes yeah, it's, it's really nice sort of looking back on all that stuff and yeah, sort of did did all sorts over the years. I just really like skateboards for um for a canvas. They're really they're such a lovely shape. They're such a sort of you know, I love the sort of the curve of the, the nose and the tail and you know, just a, the maple wood that it's on. It's really lovely to draw on or to paint on. But then also just as objects, they've got such a perfect weight, such a really nice weight that yeah, they've always been really nice. So so yeah, a couple of them there are just customs and these things on the right, they were like vinyl wraps, I think. These were um these were a company called Pop Cling. I think they did sort of vinyl graphics. So they weren't a skate company unfortunately, but they would do vinyl sort of wraps on things and, and yeah, it was just fun to fun to I said yes to everything. I still say yes to everything pretty much. Because you got to, haven't you? You got to learn and show and 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 try and so yeah. I had this little little suite of um little suite of three board graphics there with this little little pill character and this little droplet character and and the jam factory. Yeah, it was really nice. Oh, Laura says these are great, Gav. Oh, thanks, Laura. You're too kind, too kind. And just sort of continued to do that just along the way, really. From I'd sort of made up this fictional um, gang called CMYK that was like this rough, tough gang, but that was made up of the um, different uh, print colours. Uh, one in the middle there is a graphic I did for Fifty Fifty, which is a skate store here in Bristol, which I, I you know, friends of mine um, run and, um, you know, a sort of staple of the skateboarding scene. Tyler, the video creator in the chat says, what year is this? Oh, man. The ones on the left, probably 2004, five. The one, the 50-50, the gold one, that's probably Keep 2000. Keep the time. 
12, maybe 10. <gasps> Daniel Baker 2D. Dan, thanks so much for the follow. Hope you're good. Thank you for tuning in. And then the one on the right, that was a custom painted board that was at Howie's. And Howie's was a really, you know, lovely sort of eco-friendly, cool lifestyle brand. And they had a great store in Bristol and they had... Uh, a guy worked there called Tidy Mike, who's a brilliant skateboarder and sort of, uh, and he was heavy in the world of skateboarding. And he was a printer, and he um, he did all the printing at Howie's, and he organised this sort of skate exhibition. And Aaron did their first website. You did Howie's first website? No way! Amazing. Um, yeah, they did. They had a, a, a skateboard sort of exhibition, and I remember I was being um, I was put next to. Um, this guy um, who just finished it on the night, literally finished drawing on it as um, as the show opened. And it turns out that was Mr. Bingo, which I never knew at the time. And we're now good mates. So yeah, it was a really nice way to meet people as well. Oh, Phoenix Studios, the God one is pimping. Thank you, mate. Yeah, that was because it was 50-50. We did an addition of 50 boards and sort of had 50, um, um, yeah, like 50 like postcards and assign them or something like that we did like a, a group stuff together it was it was it was ace so so yeah it's always just really nice just sort of it's nice seeing that that has just been a bit of a bit of a thread aaron says it's probably the longest any of my work has been been online they kept it for years so i still have a soft spot for it oh man i remember the howie's website it was great i used to buy stuff all the time i just used to hang around the shop when i lived in bristol it was ace um, and, and characters, so these are super early characters, but it's it's nice kind of seeing that I've 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 always just loved doodling and drawing and 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 you know just kind of making 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 goofy characters and and sort of finding my way in Illustrator really I really you know was heavily inspired by you know one two three clan Tado um, um, the Beast is back. Uh, designers republic you know sort of all the the vector the vector niceness of the 2000s so i was always doing doing my own really um and and just just yeah just spending a lot of time with circles and shapes and just no one ever you know no one ever commissioned me or asked me to do these things especially in the early days i just wanted to make them i wanted to to, to put them out there and and in whatever format I could see fit, really, I was never the best painter, but I just like drawing on stuff and, and just trying to just just having fun and just sort of for me, the thrill of making something is always overridden the should I, shouldn't I? Am I good enough? Should I put it out there? The sort of excitement of just making it just always overrides those doubts um, for, for better or for worse. But I, I really love I really love doing it. And it's really funny looking back on 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 some of this stuff and just kind of seeing, um, I, you know, I can trace a path to what I do, what I do now. It, like there was this thing called uh, Pillboy. This, this, um, this, someone did this 3D render, but I, on Flickr, if you remember the days of Flickr, I had, um, I sort of offered up this vector template of a character called Pillboy and just offered it for people to download and to customize and to re-upload. And we had this amazing sort of network of people that would, 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 download the vector files and then customize it and i wish i could um i wish i could uh find all of those pill boys because we had hundreds of them and that was the first time i'd ever had this sort of connection with um with people uh sort of on online and, and through Flickr, i met james white otherwise known as signal noise who's a really good buddy of mine and you know i love seeing james's career flourish and, and all the amazing things he's doing and Pillboy was super, super special. It was just, I think someone did this 3D version as their sort of submission. And it was just ace. It was just, I just, I remember never really thinking too much about this stuff. It was more like a, let's just do it because it sounds exciting. I remember just getting lost and lost within the hours of just making it. You know, back then my, um, uh, my work-life balance was terrible because I just was consistently, constantly wanting to, um, just make and do because it's so exciting it's sort of like it's just a snowball effect the more you do the more you put out the more the more it, the more it grows and, and for me it did it, it did grow it just it just you know it was, i i would I, I slowly but surely would get different opportunities and so all of the stuff that i was just putting on there you know on jam factory for fun would turn into opportunities this this poster on the right was for uh this was sort of printed in this sort of it was bigger than a zero it was almost like a sort of eight foot 
tall, massive sort of exhibition space in Singapore. Um, I did two pieces for it and they just reached out because I saw my work online. I was really, I would make sure I would sort of show and share everywhere. I would always be pimping the links to what I was up to. Um, and yeah, and I was like, I'd never shown any work abroad ever, 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 ever. So to get this email from some people in, in Singapore um, was was flipping fantastic so you ne you know you never know and 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 it was always you know such a thrill to sort of see where things um where things can take you it really really is steffi says oh god i still have a Flickr account and i can't remember my login yeah uh, r.i.p uh, r.i.p Flickr. it's still going but they just ruined it they i think yahoo bought them and just they, they've never changed the design it's still really difficult to use it's yeah, it's such a shame because I love Flickr. I met so many interesting people, and and you know I think it got a fair few opportunities from it as well. So yeah, it's such a such a shame. And then sort of leading on from that, um, I used to do these things called Free Art Fridays, where just to try and get a bit better at drawing, I would basically buy you know like that three mil foam board stuff because it's really nice to draw on, and I would just get some gold metallic pens, and I would just draw stuff draw silly characters and then cut them out and then just place them around the streets of bristol and then i would take a picture of them and put them on Flickr. yeah it was it was Flickr, and say free art friday come and come and find it um and i would give a clue as to where it was just as a fun little game and you know i'm i'm not very good at drawing but i really i just enjoyed the process and living with with rich uh, Rich T was a big inspiration and I would also hang around with Jago and China Mike and, and Danny Wainwright and, and all of these, you know, creative geniuses who were amazing with pens and paintbrushes. And so I was constantly in awe of them wanting to be better and, you know, just just trying to sort of soak up again in that amazing 2000s era, sort of the scroll collective style of lots of different people coming together. I was massively inspired by what everyone was up to. So this was my way of just trying to be better and just put things out there and try and draw new characters and, and all of that stuff. Like sometimes I do Christmas ones as well and do sort of like multiple little series, but you know, it was super fun just trying to, uh, trying to do it and, 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 and be better really. Yeah. It's really, really fun. That sort of, um, sort of followed its way into toys. So by that point I had got into vinyl toys and collecting toys, um, and just trying to, sort of find blank ones and customize them again just was never the best at all you know you see some toy customizers that are absolutely incredible so i was always just wonking chonky but you know if wonking chonky is your thing then do it make it if you just sort of sit and wait to be better then you'll be waiting forever so just it was always nice you know looking at this it's so wonky but i really enjoyed it it was really really fun you know i think this was this was for no reason at all i think i just bought one of those blank oh what were they called these toys i can't remember now i can't remember what they're called but yeah it's just great sort of doing all of this stuff um but then over the years and actually thanks to myspace this led to a, a vinyl toy project i got super into vinyl toys and using myspace i used to put all my character doodles and designs on there and one day I got a message from a random stranger. Oh, it was called a Bud Blow Up Doll. Yes, it was, Egon. Yes, 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 yes. It was a Bud. That's it. Well remembered. Um, yeah, I got a message from this person saying, hey, you're, I really like the style of your characters. Have you ever thought about doing a vinyl toy? Like, yes, I would absolutely love to. I would absolutely love to make a vinyl toy. And it says, oh, because I know this guy called Andy. He runs a company called Crazy Label. I think you'd be perfect. He's looking for someone with a style similar to yours. So we ended up making these these toys called droplets, and that was the first time I'd ever made anything on that scale. Um, and yeah, we had these these vinyl toys, a set of five toys in five different colours, and they all came in these blind boxes that um, you could uh, you buy the blind box, and so you wouldn't know what you were what you were going to get. And oh, it's just such a thrill, such an exciting feeling, sort of knowing something you've made like physically is 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 around the world. And they were stocked in different stores around the world, and they were stocked in some stores that you know I really looked up to and and sort of uh, coveted and admired and stuff. So. Yeah, it was. Um, I really look back fondly with this this era of of droplets, and I learnt so much as well. It was it was uh, it was great, you know, doing and I got to do all the packaging and. Um, oh, Andy, you're gonna get your ship to the US. Are they still a, are still in the UK then? Oh, mate, yeah, do do. No, 
And Tyler says, I went to the release night under 50-50 for this. I have a blue one somewhere. Yes, because we had that was Series 1. And Series 1, Andy was um, at Crazy Label, was really pleased with the success. So we got to do a Series 2. And um, what was ace is, is, so the Series 2 were more ambitious. They had extra sort of sculpt details on their head. Um, and so they all had different ratios that you could collect. So the guy with the crown is is sort of like one of six, or I can't remember what the ratios were. It was harder to get. And um, and we had this launch party in in Bristol, and that that absolutely blew my mind. We we yeah, um, I was really um, sort of good friends with with Danny and Sid who ran Fifty Fifty, and they uh, kindly let me use the shop as a launch the launch place and just get to go to town. We had like projections running outside the building. We basically had a hundred customs. I had a hundred blank droplets and um, I invited sort of friends and artists from around the world, people that I really look up to, to, to customize one. So in the downstairs, we had a gallery where you could see all of the customizations and then upstairs in the shop, that was where you could buy the vinyl toys. It was the first place that you could buy them. And Oh, that night blew my mind. We had um, we had people queuing, which honestly, I, I've just always just done stuff just because I want to do it, and, and I'm always scared to think, does anyone care or will anyone like it? Because the second Keep you start time. thinking about that, um, oh, Javier you three is following. Thank you for the follow. The second you start sort of worrying about that. Um, about oh, how will it go down? Will it be? Oh, will I be on my own? Will I fall flat on my face? Then you'll never do it. You'll just become so sort of fearful of it that it was. Yeah, it was ace just to do it. So then, when sort of things like this happened and people came and stuff, it was oh man, it was it was awesome. And so this massive one, this massive one was a um, God bless. It was a, a friend of mine, good hire, who runs a um, a uh, a workshop called Cyan Lane, and he built this this massive custom one for us that was blank. We got it made blank, and so I left loads of pens out for people to customize it when they were uh, in the at the at the launch event. So, yeah, it was it was great. It was just, it was really nice looking back after it as well. Um, yeah, ah, oh, such fond memories. Wicked Skinny says, took me a hot minute to finally track down the chase here in the US. That was before shops sold open blind boxes and nobody sold their duplicates. But have you got the whole set? Oh, Wicked Skinny, you're amazing. Phoenix says, man, that 20 inch one must have cost a bomb. I got super lucky that um, they just did it for free as a as a, as a a collaboration thing, which was amazing because I could have never, could have never afforded that yet. <laughs> it would have been so, so expensive. And Egon says, I was a pretty huge toy collector and dropped it to steal some of my favourite pieces. Egon, thank you so much. It took me a long time to find a Vimto. I pulled five years ago in a blind box from eBay. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, the, the original... I don't think I've got a full set of the original Series 1 droplets. It's one of those things where I think, oh, I'm going to have loads. I don't need to worry about where they are. I'm just going to have them because um, I made them. But I actually don't think I do have them. I think I sort of my son's sort of taking them somewhere as well and so i'm even looking around now i've got a few we've got a yellow one but but yeah so it's such a such a nice um yeah just such a special just such a special moment anyway do you know what i haven't done for a little while it's a little musical interlude let's go <laughs>
Hey, haven't done that in a long time. Thanks for the indulgence. I shoddily made that beat in about five minutes before the show, so that's why it's a bit wonky. It's a bit wonky. Fun though, isn't it? Fun though, isn't it? Hey. Where were we? Where were we? Droplets, 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 droplets. Yeah, so what was nice, so um, after a while, having this one on the right at home, it was, it was, it was, um, it was kind of like, you know, when you finish school when you're a kid and you'd get all your mates to sign your t-shirt, it kind of looked like that after a while. So I went back to my friend Hyatt and kindly he repurposed it and we made a massive toy. So we made it even taller and made it all glossy blue like a proper slick droplet with those amazing super thin steel legs there. That's a single rod of steel. And he did this gorgeous taper to make the, the legs fit the body. Super, super nice. That was a vibe. Thank you, Pegasus Blur. I normally do in my streams, and I, I like to just break it up halfway through with a bit of musical nonsense. So that was that was what I like to do, even though it's wonky. Don't matter. Wonky, not wanky. That's what we like doing. I totally forgot about this until scrolling back through. My friend Rich, who um, uh, he was a senior developer at Oddman when I was there, um, he he uh, made this this web game. A, a pixel web game super fun i totally forgot about this just to be part of the launch uh, that's what he did so super good oh man i loved it absolutely loved it what a legend and then that led to other things really um ended up making a toy for real mac software and because they they like droplets i ended up doing a lot of work for real mac software uh, a mac based software company in brighton super super lovely people and they gave me loads of chances to do really interesting stuff and they commissioned a toy as well which was ace just any excuse to make a toy like they're not cheap they're not easy to make so the fact they wanted to make one as part of their uh, app called Ember was 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 awesome, and they customized, uh, they commissioned a giant one as well. Who doesn't love giant toys? These are so super good. Oh, Egon says still looking for that Ember. Yeah, do you know what? I don't know how to get hold of them anymore. I know that Real Mac had a bunch, but I still don't know how you could get them at the time. I think they were quite selective in in, in who they in who they gave them to. Um, yeah, it's really. Yeah, don't know. Keep trying though, you never know, one might pop up. Red Panda, gotta go Gav, thanks for sharing. Thank you so much for stopping by, thank you. Um, You can catch the rest of the stream, I'll be, you can watch it again for up to two weeks here, Um, but also then I'll be uploading it to my YouTube as well. So thank you so much. Chaz Gilby says, I've missed your streaming intermissions, although your streams did result in two pocket operators for Christmas. Yes, nice one, that's what, there we go, that's what we're talking about, what we're talking about. Yeah, massive one, and and I really got into sort of toy customizing and characters and stuff. And again, wasn't the best. I'm not the best by a billion percent, but really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. And I never was the best with materials. I never really knew what was, you know, my yeah, the desire and the excitement for making always outstrips the sort of technical the technical knowledge with my own stuff. Um, but that's what you know passion projects are all about isn't it just exploring and, and and seeing what you can see and what you can do and that led to some other toys as well this was a collaboration toy called shirley cream Worm and the hawk um with a poo on her head with um uh, a sculptor called alex avelino who was in um um, um bogota colombia uh, yeah he just reached out after seeing droplets and we we made this this bonkers toy together about a, a a uh, member of aristocracy who wore a particle jacket and had a, a poo with wings on her head. I don't really know where that idea came from, to be honest. It just sort of happened. I think maybe it was a total opposite of what Droplet was and kind of wanted to do something something different. So, yeah, it, it worked out. Um, it was just super fun, just a, a nice a nice thing. And that, you know, kind of, I think, paved way. Fast forward quite a few years, I ended up being... Um, uh, Tyler, the video creator, is off as well. Tyler, lovely to see you. Take care. Bye bye. Um, yeah, ended up being in, involved in um, in Gromit and Least, a project um, which was sort of designing and uh, painting uh, giant five foot tall versions of Gromit the dog, um, all um, auctioned off a charity. Uh, I've spoken about uh, Gromit and Least before. I did a stream on it, and it was just incredible. And this this thing um, got auctioned off and raised twenty nine thousand pounds for charity, which blew my tiny mind tiny mind and yeah and just uh, just look very 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 fortunately continues to be involved in the projects and stuff so sean in the city and gromit and least two you know more big big sculptures to be 
um, um, to raise money for for auctions. And so, yeah, I I, I just love big toys. Any excuse to to make to make big toys, really. And so it's been really lovely being um, being a part of being a part of that. And I think it's all just you know down to characters and toys and having an excitement and an interest. So you know the whole the whole point of just kind of putting the work out there and seeing what you can. Seeing, seeing where it can lead you is a really exciting, special um, thing. You just got to try it and just put it out there, and but then also kind of not not dwell on it. You can't put anything out there and expect it to. This is going to be the thing that changes everything for me because you can guarantee that if it's the thing you think it will, it won't. It's always the little things. I think it's always the small details. It's always the other things that people spot and go, oh, but I love that. You know, the things that maybe you discount, maybe the the little experiments. You know things mean different things to other people so what you might sort of regard as your magnum opus um, and, and another thing is a little experiment someone else might that little experiment absolutely love it so i guess the point is you're never going to know unless you make it and put it out there and just show and share and then and then move on and and funny enough i wanted to dig back through some web stuff actually because web stuff was that was my bread and butter that was what i especially when i worked for myself uh, under jam factory after i worked at christian davis for four years and then moved to to bristol in the process and started working for myself um website design was my bread and butter so that was what paid the bills and then all the other stuff i would do at night and the reason i would do that at night because uh, i enjoyed digital design and web design but i i love characters and filmmaking and 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 clothing and skateboard like all the other stuff that no one was asking me to design you know because i was predominantly doing website design that's what people asked me to do um fantastic but i wanted to do more than that so that was a, a big sort of catalyst for um for using jam factory as a, as a platform to do stuff so yeah so just for making websites for synthetic which was an art collective that um that um myself and uh, uh johnny and steve and a big group of us uh, did that later would encompass uh james klinger my good friend klingertron here whose website i i built um designed and, and built and stuff and I used to build I used to build e-commerce websites um uh by hand like no this was before C cms's existed i oh that was such a nightmare was so hard to 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 manage and to do and it was really nice making them look good and stuff but man they were they were they were tough they were really tough man <laughs> um but it was always nice having little bits of flash animation and yeah just making it look good but again this was my bread and butter this is kind of what what earned me what earned me money but it was that stuff that pushed me to 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 do to make the things that I wanted to be hired for and under the name of Jam Factory. Reviver says, "Oh, that sounds hardcore, mate. It was really hardcore, and I I really love the tech side of it. But back then, I just didn't, I I didn't, it didn't make my heart sing. It was just it was more complex and like domain registration and sort of all of that sort of stuff. And just yeah, it it made my brain hurt a bit. Like making online stores in Flash. Wow." Wow, but that's what you did in the two thousands, right? Yeah, it was it was great. Or one of the big ones. So this is Mr. Jago's website. Mr. Jago is an incredible artist based right here in Bristol, and he was the reason I moved to Bristol because I adored his work. I was a big fan of what he made, and um, turns out he was in Leicester at the same time I was in Leicester, and um, I came to uh, I basically wanted to make his website for free because he didn't have one, and he he was like yeah man sure of course you can make my website for free and so he's like come if you want come to bristol and we'll have a chat about it so hopped on the train to bristol and fell in love with the city after meeting him um just in a nice cafe called um boston tea party on on park row big big hilly street in bristol and yeah so i made two websites for him his first one this is his second one his first one he paid me in a painting which i'm looking at right now it's this gorgeous big painting that i've had now for nearly 20 years or so because it's absolutely gorgeous um and then this was his second website that, that sort of had all of these pieces of flash animation on it and and this whole thing was styled to look like the visor that um i i can't remember who looks through it's in star wars whose visor is it sort of like binoculars um because duncan jago is a massive um fan of um of Star Wars and stuff. So it was just great making stuff like that for people who I absolutely adored. And, you know, I learned animation by doing motion graphics in Flash. You know, that's how I learned sort of timing and, and, and pacing and, and, you know, animation. 
is by doing this sorts of stuff really so yeah so you know even though it, it, it was always really complex it sort of had a, a, a real strong place in my heart and you know Duncan's still a friend if you you know go and see what work Mr Jager makes now it's absolutely incredible and I'm very proud to have his, you know I've got two of his I've got the the first website I've got a painting and this for this website I got paid as a, in a silk this gorgeous big Jago silk that we hang in our bedroom is stunning. So, you know, it's just, and I just wanted to do it. I wanted to make this website for him and I just wanted to do it for free because I adored his work and just wanted to add more to my portfolio. Um, and so it's just a lovely collaboration. And Steffi in the chat says, that's exactly what I'm doing. Passion projects outside of work. The ones that fill your creative soul with, yes, Steffi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've, you've got to. I mean, we talk about this a lot, of course, don't we? But you know finding the time and energy to do them is super super difficult but you know just having that passion for yes i want to do it i want to make that i want to see it i want to do it is you've got to you've absolutely got to because why not why not live a creative life live a happy fulfilled life you got to total in a totally different direction looking through all of my stuff bikes bikes are a big part of my creative life actually um and, and it started because a, a friend of mine got me into the world of fixed gear bicycles fixies which um if you're unfamiliar are essentially bikes with just one gear um you can't coast you can't freewheel if you pedal forwards you pedal forwards if you in theory pedal backwards you pedal backwards if you stop your legs lock your legs then the, the bike will stop so they're super 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 simple bikes and i really got into them because i love the aesthetic look this was um, my bike called um, Liberace. Uh, I wanted a stupid looking bike that was ostentatious and silly and in your face. And this was my absolute pride and joy. I absolutely uh, adored it. And because it was like an extension creative wise, it was an extension because you could customize this mode of transport, something that I'd never, I'd never thought about. <laughs> Reviver Knight says, that is clearly your bike. <laughs> yeah, hot pink, hot pink and gold, even gold tires. Did you know you can get gold tires? They were so hard to find. And I was just, I loved riding it, but I didn't because it would make the tires dirty and you couldn't see the gold anymore. But yeah, I absolutely loved that bike. And it sort of, that basically inspired this world of creativity. Um, this was a little graphic because actually that, long story short, that bike got nicked from a mile flat and I was devastated, absolutely devastated. Um, but then a, um, the insurance did pay out and I built, I rebuilt the bike for better. Sort of, a, a, sort of every element was better actually and so I called it Liberati 2 the Phoenix and because it was a Phoenix because it risen from the ashes I made this graphic and had a special little logo that was put on the on the front of my of my bike because I loved it um but yeah ended up making this film called Bikes Mind with a big group of friends which was started out as like a five minute short basically documenting the like-minded people that I'd met who rode fixie bikes in Bristol and ended up being a half hour documentary about why you would ride such mad bikes in a city full of hills. And this thing just grew and grew and grew. And actually it was a big part of what got me um, uh, talking about filmmaking at Auburn. I genuinely believe it was a big stepping stone for me because it was the biggest sort of thing I'd ever um, worked on film wise. And, and then I, I sort of, it was the first time I'd really directed something in that, of that scale and stuff. So yeah, so so bikes mine was a big sort of big sort of creative part of of my life for a very long time, and and funny enough, that was celebrating ten years um, in August actually, and and yeah, and just sort of got fully my, immersed in bike culture and ended up sort of designing stuff. So this is some t-shirts for for Howies. I think that's another graphic for Howies. Um, and just making stuff, making stuff for the for the fun of it. Uh, I think what I loved about bikes mine it was just this creative excuse to to make to make stuff happen and make stuff happen sort of execute it in a certain in a certain style um sort of give bikes mind its own sort of unique look which was like this red and red and white like inspired by sort of swiss sort of swiss design because uh bikes mind is just if you're a bristolian it's bikes it's just a bike isn't it mind uh, a lot of true bristolians put mind at the end of every sentence sort of like right there yeah cheers mind it's just a sort of a colloquialism that they they say so um boik's mind um if you sort of like put a z in it and put umlauts over the over the o's it kind of looks like a swiss modern uh, 
clever film and it's really not it's just a bristolian bristolian slang but yeah i really enjoyed sort of going to town on the graphics on this and um so when we were going to do the premiere um i thought that oh ollie gibbs is here hey ollie how you doing good evening my brother i hope you're well um yeah when we were doing the um sort of getting ready to sort of have a have a bit of a premiere we'd finished the film after sort of like a good you know couple of years and um, the best way I thought to sort of tell people about it is I designed these these tags that I would put on nice looking Frixie bikes around the city that said, nice bike mind. And then, yeah, on the back, if you want to see other nice bikes, then come to the premiere, the Fix Geared Bicycle Documentary Bikes Mind, Saturday, 20th of August, Millennium Square on the big screen, starts at eight, free and open to all. Because we managed to blag showing our film on the massive screen in a Millennium Square in Bristol. And it was amazing. Look at all these people that came. Oh, it's so good. That, that again, is an absolute... Um, oh, in terms of a project that sort of just changed everything, like Droplets and sort of Gromit Leashed, Bikes Mine was just, was just bonkers. And, and, yeah, people who weren't interested in bikes came. And because there were so many people who were in the film, like because we interviewed a lot of people, um, it was a documentary, you know, they brought all their friends as well. And, oh, it's such an amazing community experience. It was... It was really special it really really was um yeah really special i've only just noticed there's a rainbow in this is that a rainbow in the sky is that a lens flare either way it was a very 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 special night i loved it and it spawned loads of different things it sort of spawned um uh, uh this 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 race called fixed and chips sort of had this idea to have a bit of an alley cat race so an alley cat is sort of like a, a unofficial race in a city a fixie race and yeah had this race called fix and chips where uh, the rules were you had to get around five chip shops and eat as many chips and batter sausages as you can because it wasn't about being how fast you are it was about being how sort of clever and creative you could be with your route and how many chips and how many batter sausages you were willing to or mushy peas if you're a vegetarian uh, how many uh, of those were you were willing to to scuff down your down your gullet um, to win and it was absolutely bonkers I'll do a total um, I think I've, I've, I've talked about Bikes Mind before um, um, but yeah it the it the second one uh, got shut down by the police it, <laughs> it all went a bit wrong but yeah it was you know it was just great and it was great doing all the graphic design for this I just really enjoyed working in that style and stuff so again you know creating a passion project that's an excuse for you to do something that you've always wanted to do is just fantastic it's really really fun so I kind of want to just then sort of just go through maybe just some graphics because just just digging through the archives, there was all sorts of um, of different stuff really from from the eras of just I don't know. It's just nice looking back from I really enjoyed sort of I re- I've always loved photography and, and and film photography and so I really enjoyed sort of mixing up fil- um, photos I'd shot on film with vector graphics and then CMYK was this. Um, um, sort of over printy stuff this fictional gang graphic which i don't know why just yeah it was just nice just to do stuff aaron in the chat says you talked about fixing chips before and the event producer in me was just anxious about all the liability yeah see that's what happens when you're a 20 something you don't think about liability and you know i would never do that now that was such a silly thing to do because i just i just genuinely did not even occur to me that i would be liable because i'd i would um it was yeah because i decided to have you know organize the event it was like ah, everything will be fine yes i won't be doing that again i'm a grown-up now i'm a parent can't do that (laughs) bell 13 says we playing lots of gta yeah i think i must have been actually yeah um yeah all sorts of different stuff from graphics for friends shops a workshop was a, a store here in bristol and you know love sort of that la style um sort of gangster sort of script stuff you know i was massively influenced by esteban Oriel and mr cartoon there's a documentary that i've talked about a lot called the run-up oh, excuse me windy pops and um mr cartoon is just a genuine inspiration and who, who's a famous tattoo artist in la and funny enough, he talks about having to do 20 years worth of work before, you know, any sort of recognition comes along. And I remember at the time hearing that just because he's talks about that. He's just, you know, worked super hard and just puts in the graft. And, you know, I remember thinking, wow, 20 years. Imagine working on 20 years or something. Just times, times goes by, you know, uh, some stuff on the right there, more graphic design for, for real Mac software. 
you know, Synthetic was this art collective that we had that just we would make stuff. We would do all of these um, shows around the country because we could. And we had we organized this little mini art tour where we had a, a show in Middlesbrough, a show in Nottingham and a show in Bristol. And it was just it was it was awesome. So the the, the full crew that was part of this was Jam, Jam Factory. That's my name. Uh, Clinger Tron, Mr. Jago, Waste, Rich T, Danny Wainwright, Orko and Pwn. Um, and then we had photography from Laura Thorne, Lee Pace, Dave Canning, and the Zin Fan Elite. You know, it was just, it was just ace. We just, you know, just organising stuff and making stuff happen yourself. Um, you know, even just like designing this flyer, I love that. That was using one of those Lomo cameras because we ended up getting a bit of a deal with Lomography. They sort of sponsored this thing. And Lomography is like a lo-fi camera company. And they gave us all of these sort of lo-fi cameras, which I already had anyway because I loved them. So it was ace just to sort of, just to chance it and just say, could hey, we want to do the show. Is there any chance you could sponsor it or throw anything our way? And you know, just making things happen. That was what's so super fun about all of this. Just making things happen, and you know, driving around the country, just organising shows ourselves, and oh, just making stuff. This here on the left is some stuff that I did for the very first stuff that I did for Auburn actually when I was there for the first six months as freelance. Um, this uh, some weird character stuff for a website called Formations. On the stuff on the right was some um, um, uh, promo poster sort of for Odessa. Odessa is a rapper in the Crew Doom Tree, and I just loved her. I've always loved her uh, lyricism and stuff. And yeah, so often I would just make things for people that I loved and, and adored, whether that's you know a filmmaker or a or a musician or whatever, and just sometimes would send it to them or, or just whatever you know just if you're excited by something i just it's nice to be a cheerleader and, and and if you can be creative about it then ace you know it was anything to sort of get those i don't know to, to get better and to learn you know to you know maybe sometimes it's about trying a new texture or trying out a new typeface that sort of stuff bell 13 says i've got a lomo lca somewhere yes that's what i had as well i haven't seen it for years Oh, Pledge Duster. Hi, Gavin. Only just tuning in, Sally, but congratulations on the double decade. Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Yeah, you'll be able to watch the show again on Catch Up here for the next 14 days, but also I will upload it to YouTube as well uh, next week. Thank you for dropping dropping by. We're just looking through at some old some stuff, just wrapping up some some bits, you know, from sort of making graphics and, and ended up doing a few computer arts um, covers, which was ace. And through that, I got to meet Al Wardle, who runs Any40, his clothing brand. And so I got to do some graphics for, for that. Um, yeah. And then because um, I ended up sort of becoming friends with the guys at Future who would publish computer art. So I ended up doing um, a few covers and a few sort of um, illustrations and stuff and, and just you know that's the that's the real truth as well like nepotism exists and you know if you become friends with people then often you know sometimes if they're in a bind it's easier to get your mates to to do stuff so you know hopefully they hired me because they like me but also i am i'm not i'm not silly enough to think that sometimes i was the easy option at times not that this cover i'm not I'll commission me properly, but just, you know, if you're close to people, then, you know, it's, it's just always nice if, if things sort of, if things sort of happen creatively, you know? And so, yeah, you know, got to build a really nice relationship with people and, and Al. Yeah. Oh, Matt Booth, Javier, Ollie. Yeah. Everyone's talking about computer arts. Ollie said, did you work with Rob Carney? Yes, I did work with Rob many a time. Yeah. 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 I worked with, with the computer arts and computer arts projects guys for years, actually. Um, every now and then something would something would pop up whether it's a tiny little illustration feature or yeah it was always really really nice um just to working with them like when i join arman make these little infographics based on sort of what we were up to in the interactive department this thing on the right uh, i ended up thanks to bikes mine got invited to give a talk out in salt lake city and so going there i sort of made up these postcards that would um that i made up facts about england because i didn't know what if people i think you know in america everyone thinks that, that we all know the queen and we're all very regal and royal um and so i ended up asking on twitter some people for some made up facts and so i chose at random three of the best made up facts about england and then illustrated them so just sort of just silly just silly things, just doing silly, silly things. Um, ended up because of, you know, doing work with 5050 in graphic design, ended up do, designing their collaboration with Diamond Supply Co. a few years ago, quite a few years ago now. That was sick. You know, I really like Diamond and I like their clothes. Keep and stuff, the so time. That's really nice. Congroove, thank you for the follow. How are you doing? Thanks for stopping by. 
yeah, so just you never know where stuff will go. This was some of the graphics for the for one of the Sean in the City um, sculptures. Um, that was great, really nice fun. This was all um, uh, used as sort of laser cut vinyl that was attached to to the the Big Sean sculpture. So yeah, just you know everything and, and any excuse. This was a, a collaboration I did with Sally Hawkins, actress Sally Hawkins, who was in the Godzilla movie. Um, I did this collaborative screen print. With her, so her line in the trailer, um, she's talking about nuclear um, uh, Godzilla, possibly um, uh, the the nuclear Pacific tests in the sixties um, were supposedly nuclear tests. But in the trailer, it inferred that Sally says they were not tests, meaning that they are actually trying to kill Godzilla. And so, um, yeah, so it ended up because my um, friend Finbar Hawkins, who was on the, the the stream a few months ago, who just wrote the book, brilliant book, which his sister is Sally Hawkins. And um, yeah, because I, I love Godzilla and I, I want to do this graphic, I asked if he wouldn't mind introducing us and we did this collaborative print together where she, she, she wrote not tests and has signed all of them. So yeah, so that was a really nice thing to do because I love Sally and I love what she makes and she's a great actor. Um, I think I still have some of these actually. I should put them back on my online store. So yeah, she's awesome. And of course, Ollie, I'm sure you've met her and worked with her as well. Yeah, she's, she's lovely. Pledge Duster. Uh, man, I kill to have even have half your creative energy, dude. Ah, oh, thank you. Ah, oh, it's just making stuff is it, you know being creative is 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 energy in itself, right? So, yeah, I just think I'm super fortunate to be able to do what I love and to 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 be creative and to have that flipping it. We could be doing real work. Um, so you know, gotta gotta take advantage of it. Never never want to take it for granted. Oh, Ollie, yes, I will. I will definitely try and dig them out and put them back in my online store, mate. Because I'm, I'm sure I've got, I've got some, and they're lovely prints. They glow in the dark as well, so you can just see some faint details on Godzilla. Um, that's sort of like when you, when you turn the lights off, it, it's inverted. I was really proud of that. Yeah, you know, ended up doing some over the years. Obviously, getting more involved with Arben, and you know, now I'm director and designer, but. Um, my career sort of changed as, as I work with different departments. So I got to start working with the art department on the feature films and, and did some stuff for the Sean, Sean the Sheep movie. And, you know, just sort of seeing where all this stuff takes, you know, I definitely plot, I plot all of this, um, that just making stuff and putting it out there, you know, people, you've got to show and share what you can do because people don't know. They've got very, um, uh, you know, they're focused on what they're focused on. So you can't, you know, you can't assume people know everything about what you, you make. You do have to, you know, there's no harm in just showing and sharing all the time because you never know. And for me, you know, I feel like I've got this, this dream job and, and I'm, I'm very fortunate to do things I love and that that's happened by showing and sharing. So you've really, really got to, you know, that sort of, I believe sort of also led to me um, writing a book um, because of just trying to show and share and be out there and ended up by doing talks because I love sharing what I do. And that led to me speaking at the do lectures and the do lectures led to me writing this book, Do Fly. But then just trying to take advantage of it. And, you know, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to make all the graphics and, you know, make the launch film and, and, and do the graphic design and, you know, make an event to, to launch it and all of that stuff. You know, I think just any opportunity you have, you just got to grab it absolutely gotta gotta grab it because you never know where it's gonna take you from you know you know rap music videos with weird masks and, and and motion graphics to ended up you know ended up doing title sequences and you know those title sequences laid the ground for me you know did the um i did a title sequence the end credits in the shawn the sheep movie um shawn the sheep farmageddon movie that was released a couple of years ago you know, and, and again, I'm sort of tracking where all this came from. And I believe it was learning motion graphics in Flash for my own personal website that sort of would lead me to do motion graphics animation, would lead me to do this stuff, which would lead me to being a director, you know. So it's it's lovely sort of actually thinking, no, it's it's I'm really glad that I did this stuff. I'm glad that I put I'm glad that I, I just excitedly sunk these hours into into doing that because actually it does mean something and even if it even if it didn't result in the career that I have that I love I absolutely loved the process in the moment despite all of the creative frustrations and all of the all of the stuff that you know makes you angry and frustrated and upset that's that's never to be underestimated it's that is a, just a creative life. It's never going to be all peachy at all. Um, but yeah, it is nice just thinking, no, you know, and I, I encourage everyone to do it, you know, look back in your old stuff if you can. And, and, and you, I think you will see a thread and you should be proud of yourselves and making stuff 
you know, because it's it's not that easy to do. And, and you know, it, yeah, you know, we should be cheerleaders for each other and be like, yeah, man, you made a thing. You did a thing. Designed by Jake is here. Hey, mate, bit late dropping by, but hope you're doing well. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, we're just um, nearly nearly wrapping up. We've just been going through going through some, some old work and some nonsense and stuff. Oh, and Laura gives us a little heart for FITC. Yeah, the FITC that was a poster and um, did the title sequence for them as well, which was which was awesome fun about three years ago. That was that was really good. And sometimes I just like using graphic design for, you know, sending a message and just you know I'm very pol politically outspoken and um, I'm very much anti hate, anti intolerance, anti you know all of the horrible stuff that's happening right now. So. The only way I can express myself is through the visual medium. So, yeah, you know, I still I'm proud of this graphic because it sadly it means something in America. Uh, but yeah, we won't dwell on that. And yeah, just sort of, I guess, fast forward just to I'm really I, I can still, yeah, you know, follow that thread. And I'm doing a lot more 3D stuff now. And but hopefully it's 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 still me. It's hopefully bright and fun and silly and. Yeah, I've really enjoyed just just developing more CG 3D stuff. And again, I'm not the best technically at all. Those who have been on the stream have seen how abysmal I am at doing things the right way. But you know, I get there in the end. It takes me a while, but I get there. I get there in the end, and then just sort of making things for fun. Like that graphic was to celebrate my son Solly being two. Just made his big face out in gold, and you know, just playing really, and just having 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 fun and it's really nice exploring it sort of new medium and and again they've then led on to different sort of commissions and you know this thing on the right was a poster sort of print for for the off festival so it's really nice that they have um it just yeah you can just plot it you, it's just taking you places you know this graphic on the left was a commission for uh, millican bags and extract coffee and yeah you know again make do show share you never know where it's where it's going to take you yeah, you know my music stuff, which I put under the name of Project Toy, is 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 testament to that. You know, got to make a branding system for it, and you know, no one knows or cares about this. My music is not very good, but it it doesn't matter. It's it's an outlet. You know, you got to find any outlet you can to just to be out there. Just to just to it's better for it to exist and to not. You know, don't keep it locked in your head. Get it out there. Then a great reason for you know for for making music is you could then got to make some visuals to to go along with it as well. So I've really enjoyed sort of creating this visual system for how the the sleeves look, and then just having different different sort of graphic styles every time for every little release. And these are just really short little musical tracks and stuff. But you know it's then nice combining all of that to you know make the music, do the graphic design, do the animation, and sort of you know have it be a be a part of that so it's just you know all of this stuff is just a sum total of, of of everything else and exactly pegasus blur says getting something done is the main thing yes exactly red glove rider we care gav we care thank you boss and that brings us up to today you know uh, i wanted to sort of end on this 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 graphic that i i released this morning um I'm really proud of it. You know, it's just a silly pink factory spewing out gold, but you know, it's still the same factory that designed 20 years ago. And, and I still love pink and I still love gold. Now, you know, I've learned, you know, how CG rendery stuff and animation. And yeah, I'm really proud of this. And, and for the crypto art crew, I ended up sort of really fascinated by the world of crypto art as well. And so this is an NFT, a non fungible token, a piece of crypto art. And so this is just a nice graphic, but in the world of crypto art, I made an edition of 20 that's 20, 2020 pixels wide by 2020 pixels high. It's a loop of 20 frames. Um, it costs 0 0.20 ETH, uh, you know, and it's just nice for to sort of like, and I minted it, so I committed it to the blockchain today, exactly 20 years after um, registering Jam Factory. So it's quite nice to sort of do that sort of in that, weird wonderful world of, of crypto art as well so so yeah so so that was a little a little run through of my um my creative career does any does anyone have any questions i mean it's not a q a is it but just just i didn't know if anyone does have um anything to ask Fennel works is one step closer to earning that Beeple 3.2 million. Yes, my friend Mike, uh, who goes by the name of Beeple, I'm sure you know his wonderful creative work, just did very, very, very well in the world of crypto art. 
made a few a few mil cheeky mil he's a good lad oh thank you for sharing thank you for sharing thank you thank you for listening this is this would be nothing if um if you know if you people didn't tune in and funny enough actually so i want to make a book i'd really like by the end of the year to make a bit of a an art an art book with some of that art in and some more stories and yeah just to just if anything for me to compile it just for my own like to give to the kids when they're older but you know I'm, i'd hopefully sort of do it so if, if people were interested they could buy a copy as well so yeah so i'd really like to um yeah i'd really like to make a book i kind of want to make some more stickers and badges and stuff but yeah i think a, a book may be a nice like solid a nice solid object um to share with the world <gasps> questions snares or mega drive oh well i had neither i had neither snares for Star Fox, mega drive for 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 sonic gotta be yeah gotta be raise the statues to the next 20 years i raise your glass a, a cup of a cup of water oh actually no if i am on the hard stuff i am on um um fizzy uh posh lemonade posh from audi only the best for me celebrating 20 years Will off Barcelona be a go ahead? Mm, I don't think so. No, no, unfortunately. And Matt says, are we going to get that beer in Barcelona when off is in on again? Yes, we are. We are. Well, again, I'll have a fizzy pop. If I even looked at a beer, I think I'd fall over. Favourite pie? Favourite pie? That's a good question. Ooh. Oh, any... Oh, we just had... So, Pie Minister, I don't know if... Um, you can get Pie Minister around the UK, right? Pie Minister sold in Sainsbury's and stuff. They've got an amazing new sort of vegan range. And when uh, Sylvie was born, our baby, our new baby, um, our friends basically sent us like a massive box from Pie Minister of vegan and vegetarian pies. And I can't remember what they're called, but there were some banging ones in there. So any Pie Minister pie. Phoenix says, I wonder if Off is going ahead this year. I can't say officially, but... Mm, I, mm, <laughs> mm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what I'm allowed to say, but I don't know. Uh, oh, Chloe, I would definitely love a book of your work, and I hope to get an Arnie mug one day. Yes, sorry. so <laughs> these flipping Arnie mugs. I know I've been meaning to get them out because you lovely people have always expressed a lovely interest in them, and and they're in the loft, and we've been trying to move house since June, and. I'm I'm not going to go off on a house buying slash selling rant on a, on a stream, but um, mm. <laughs> yes, we're not moved. When we move, we'll be able to find everything in the loft, and I'll get them lovely mugs out. Oh, you bought your dad an Arnie mug, Pegasus. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And Ollie is in the midst of buying too. I know the pain. Yeah, it's just a flipping pain. We just had such annoying people. Um, yeah. So I don't know in regards to off. Um, Yes, I I don't know I I don't I don't know officially what's happening, but it's not in my mind. It's not looking too good, is it? At the minute, really, we're doing quite well in in terms of um, getting people um, vaccinated. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to feel ready to fly again this year. Do you lot? I I don't. I'm so. Uh, uh, um. Yeah, don't know, don't know, don't know. So yeah, so that's me, that's me. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. Do you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to go and watch the latest episode of WandaVision with my wife, my wife, because it's well good and I'm really into it. So thank you so much, everyone. Honestly, like from the bottom of my heart, if you've, if you've, if you've, you know, just for checking out a stream, but if you've ever looked at like one of the Jam Factory websites in the past or sent a lovely tweet or this still just absolutely blows my mind that, that we can have a creative community and, and, and you people would, would give us your time on a Saturday night. I really appreciate that. Oh, Aaron's just thought of a really good point. Yes. Discord. We have a, a discord called the happy place discord. Um, if you type, is it exclamation mark discard here in the chat? Um, disc I can't remember how to do this. It's been so long since I streamed. 
Yes. Um, we've got a happy place Discord server. It's a it's a lovely place. Just come and hang out. It's a positive place, a place to escape the horrors of the internet. It's an awesome community of people. And we all just basically, as we're all working from home, we're just talking and chatting and sharing. So do come and join us. Um, so yeah, thanks for the reminder, Aaron. Shout out the happy place Discord. Um, pledge just to thank you. That's very kind of you to say. Thank you for continuing to share and inspire, dude. Ah, oh, you're too kind honestly i just love what i do i feel very very fortunate um i could be doing a real job i'm not um and i never want to take it for granted and i want to be a cheerleader for just because this is just the best thing you know so thank you thank you oh you're all lovely wonderful humans go and enjoy the rest of your saturday evening thank you again 20 years i can't flip and believe it gonna finish off me pop god bless you love you all have a lovely rest of the weekend. Stay safe. Peace.